There's nothing worse than the biting cold to remind your enemies you're in control. And whether it's offensive or defensive moves you're looking to tap into, there's something for everyone in the frost tree. Hey there friends, it's Kodiak here. Welcome back to Legacy Gaming. Today, we're taking a deep dive into frost abilities, what they are, how to unlock them, and ultimately, if they're any good. As always, when doing a ranking video here on the channel, I like to start by making it crystal clear. This type of content, these rankings are subjective. What we think is bad or good may not be what you think is bad or good, and that's fine. We always appreciate you letting us know in the comments, and in many cases, you guys actually change our minds on a ranking. So let's just start on the same page before we dive in. Now to do a proper rankings video, at least in our eyes, you have to establish some ground rules, something to keep us honest about how and why we're ranking things the way that we did. For our V-Rising series, we're keeping things relatively simple, focusing on three key areas, effectiveness in PvE, effectiveness in PvP, and utility. All of the abilities are running through that filter and hopefully allows us to more accurately characterize everything we're talking about. The goal is for us to reveal a rank and you guys agree, or at least be close. So with the disclaimer out of the way and the ground rules established, let's dive in to the rankings. The first ability on the list is Crystal Lance. When cast, players launch a projectile dealing 150% magic damage and inflicting chill. Hitting a chilled enemy freezes it for 4 seconds. The Crystal Lance splinters into a nova of projectiles on impact, and each splinter deals 50% magic damage, chilling or freezing targets as well. Enemy vampires are frozen for 2.5 seconds. Crystal Lance is unlocked after killing the V-Blood unit, Marowyn the Elementalist, in Silverlight Hills. She's technically an endgame boss, so don't expect to get this ability too quickly. Crystal Lance is powerful, and that 150% magic damage scales nicely, but in terms of benefits that matter, well, that's really all there is to talk about with this ability. Crystal Lance is decent enough as a straight-line projectile, but if you put some logic behind it, the spell just doesn't have enough practical usability. The real issue is the long cast time and nova of projectiles. In PvP, a long cast time means a few things. One, an ability is easy to predict, and two, you're locked into a cast animation slowing you down. Those two things alone are bad enough, but factor in the ability's secondary effect, the Nova of Projectiles, and sadly, Crystal Lance just isn't that great. The issue here is that the projectiles don't often hit anything, and unless you're really smart and skillful with your casts, the impact of those additional missiles is next to none. Sadly, Crystal Lance just doesn't have a lot of practical use, which is why it's getting a C rank. Next on our list is Frost Barrier. This shield increases movement speed by 10% and blocks melee and projectile attacks in front of you for 2 seconds. It also spawns up to 8 waves of frost, dealing 50% magic damage and inflicting chill when the barrier is struck. To unlock Frost Barrier, you need to kill the V-Blood unit, Vincent the Frostbringer, who can be found patrolling the roads of the Dunley Farmlands. I highly recommend tracking him at the Blood Altar since he covers quite a bit of ground. As we talked about in our Unholy Abilities ranking video, shields are incredibly powerful. Frost Barrier is really no exception. The damage component, those waves of frost, in conjunction with the chill effect, is a strikingly good combination. In both PvE and PvP, it performs well, and if you lean into a frost build, you can really capitalize on that chilled effect. If used correctly, the shield is also hard to dodge. This isn't like a skeleton that you can simply run away from. The waves of frost that spawn are designed well, and if something hits the shield, the enemy will most likely pay the price. Ultimately, this is a great ability that functions well across the board and checks off a lot of boxes, which is why it's getting an A rank. Next on our list is Frostbat. When cast, players launch a projectile that explodes upon impact, dealing 100% magic damage and inflicting chill on surrounding enemies. Hitting a chilled enemy freezes it for 4 seconds, and the enemy vampires that are hit are frozen for 2.5 seconds. To unlock Frostbat, players need to kill the V-Blood unit, Keely the Frost Archer, in the far east of Farbane Woods. Frostbat is an all-around solid frost skill, and while it may not have a ton of flash, it's got a lot of substance. First off, it's near instant cast, it's a lot more valuable in both PvE and PvP, which gives the ability an edge over Crystal Lance. Also, you get two charges, which is good for a number of reasons. Chief among them, you can use this one skill to inflict chill and freeze if you land both shots. There's also an AoE component that's easy to land, which is always nice in both PvE and PvP. And finally, if you really lean into the Frost Tree, Frostbat fits in nicely as a spell that can really lay the foundation for a more powerful build. With all that in mind, if it wasn't already clear, Frostbat is a great spell, which is why it's getting an A rank. 
Changing gears, let's talk about Ice Nova. When cast, players summon a Nova of Ice at the target location, dealing 100% magic damage and freezing any enemy already affected by chill for 4 seconds. The Nova radiates outward, inflicting chill for 5 seconds to any enemy hit. Enemy vampires are frozen for 2.5 seconds. To unlock Ice Nova, players need to kill the V-Blood unit, Frostmaw the Mountain Terror, and the Hollowed Mountains. Since the Hollowed Mountains aren't complete at the time of making this video, the boss's location could potentially change in the future. Ice Nova is another Frost ability that seems great on paper, but just a few too many things hold it back from being truly awesome. Sadly, it doesn't get any Magic Amp, which keeps its damage relatively low. It's also a fairly easy ability to spot. Luckily, the instant cast and quick ramp up time makes this a relatively small issue. Where it does excel is impact. Because of its large AoE, you can really catch multiple players or groups of enemies off guard, which allows you to set up an engagement or slow down foes enough to get away. Ideally, you use this as a follow-up skill to an already chilled opponent, which makes us feel like it truly needs to be used in conjunction with something else to make any sort of meaningful impact in a fight. and just doesn't stand up on its own, which is why Ice Nova is getting a B rank. The Frost Travel skill, Veil of Frost, allows players to dash towards a given direction, elude nearby enemies for 2.2 seconds, and apply a self-shield for 125% of their spell power. Their next primary attack deals 25% bonus damage and conjures a Nova of Frost, dealing 50% magic damage and inflicting chill on nearby enemies. Veil of Frost is also unlocked when killing the V-Blood unit Vincent the Frostbringer in the Dunley Farmlands. Veil of Frost is a powerful travel skill, one of the better options in the game. Because of its unique effect, it gives players the flexibility to use it as an offensive move for inflicting chill or triggering the final component of freeze, or a defensive tool by using it just before getting hit or absorbing a dot effect entirely. The stunlock team was pretty generous with the ability's effects, giving players a self-shield, bonus damage, and a magic component, but you do lose a little something, the ability to reposition with a recast. That being said, Veil of Frost is a powerful option that stands up well in PvE, PvP, in a Frost build, or on its own, which is why it's getting an A rank. Our first Frost ultimate is Arctic Leap. When cast, players leap into the air and strike down at a target location, dealing 225% magic damage. A Nova of Frost erupts from the impact location, freezing any enemy's hit for up to 6 seconds, and of course enemy vampires are frozen for half of that, 3 seconds. To unlock this ability, players need to kill the V-Blood unit Terror Claw the Ogre in the Hollowed Mountains. Again, because this zone isn't complete, this boss might be relocated during development. If there were a meta ultimate in B-Rising's PvE, it would be Arctic Leap. The damage is remarkably high and scales accordingly. In most situations, it obliterates mobs, but also has the added value of being able to control enemy movement with its freeze effect. The impact is where you get the damage and the initial chill effect, but the control comes because of the expanding Frost Nova. You get both sides of the coin, and while the ability isn't quite as powerful by itself in PvP, mainly due to its easy-to-spot animation, when it's executed correctly as a follow-up to its incapacitate, the impact is massive and leads to chain-stun combos. It's also as close to perfect an ultimate as you'll find in the game, which is why Arctic Leap is getting an S rank. Our last Frost ability is Frost Vortex. When cast, players conjure a Frost Storm that deals 100% magic damage and pulls enemies towards the center. The storm rages on for 6 seconds, dealing 480% magic damage and inflicting chill on all enemies. To unlock Frost Vortex, you'll need to kill the endgame V-Blood unit, the Winged Terror. To reach this enemy, you'll need to kill Night Marshal Sticks in the Cursed Forest to obtain Bat Form. Use Bat Form, fly to the Winged Terror's location, and kill the boss. On paper, Frost Vortex seems all-powerful, with incredibly high damage that scales well. The issue is, the ability really only has potency in PvE. The issue in PvP is that Frost Vortex is easy to avoid, even without a travel skill available. If used correctly, or if you manage to catch enemies off guard, the skill can make a serious impact, but there is a secondary animation that has a bit of a false start, once again allowing players to escape. Luckily, the high damage and large AoE save this ultimate from being a total bust, and its PvE potency is good enough. But sadly, there's just a few too many things holding it back, which is why Frost Vortex gets a C rank. While not immediately accessible in V-Rising, Frost is one of those skill trees that really develops later into the game, and top to bottom, it's hard to argue that there aren't a lot of good options here. The real selling point is that many Frost abilities feature both offensive and defensive components, and work well in PvE and PvP, which, as a reminder, is part of our criteria for judging. 
If you lean into a Frost build, you'll immediately recognize how good the abilities are, but even worked into other builds, Frost abilities hold up well, helping players establish more diverse builds. It's a great skill tree that the developers did a nice job putting together, and definitely worth exploring if you haven't done so already. We hope you guys enjoyed our rankings of the Frost abilities in V Rising. If you have any questions or want to share your rankings of the Frost abilities, you know what to do. Leave us a comment down below and we'll do our best to get back to you. Of course, if you did like this video and you want us to continue on with the ranking series, we need your help. Hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing. It's still the single best way to help channels like ours reach new audiences. If you're interested in joining our V Rising private server, consider joining us on Discord. We've got a small PvP server with 2x resources set up for anyone to use. Just check out the link below and join today. Finally, if you like everything we're doing here on the channel and you want to support us even more, consider becoming a member. For just a few bucks, you're helping Livid and I achieve our dreams of becoming full-time content creators. Check out the join button below to learn more. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.